So today, we're going to talk about the dashboard, which means the, the, all the settings and how you can operate the various aspects of um, this algorithm, mostly BT. We can talk about ProSTR2, or maybe we can do that another time. BT is the real T-Rex here. That, has, that is the most advanced, and that's self-adaptive. So I'd like everybody to really get acquainted with BT. Later, ProSTR is everything that BT does except with an ATM. So you can always understand ProSTR much better once you understand how BT works and what's the, the uh, philosophy if that's the right word behind BT. Quite a few settings, but not too complicated. Once you get the hang of it, you'll see that two, three, four things you really need to think about a little bit and test it out. And once you're happy with the results, just save the template. And there's definitely no need to fiddle with every day. Maybe once a month, you may want to review something. But since it's self-adaptive, if you use reasonable settings, then and if you respect your risk management rules remember mathematics is the foundation of all this then it's not something you need to really be fiddling with every day so all these links in the slideshow later will be published these are links you can click on them and it will take you to this page where technical specifications is the particular page in the user documentation that we are talking about today by the way this chart what is happening in real time 4 p.m this is just amazing. It's a confirmation of basically everything we do. It's not a proof because it's just one event, but this kind of event, it happens with such a regularity. Look at this algorithmic signal, and this is an intraday chart. Algorithmic signal, we get in, there's a pullback, of course, consolidation area. Look at the, the little pillow or the cloud to be official. The cloud is a measurement of momentum. Cloud is widening momentum, reason to go long, and we hit the previous pivot, whichever that was probably yesterday's high. The session is done 411, so this is just a, just a beautiful coincidence, but I wouldn't say it's a con coincidence because it happens too often, but I didn't cherry pick this. It is happening right now. It's real time. I'm on the market right now. I'm happy to see that what we do is playing out in the real world as well. So we are in BT. I'm on the smallest chart, which is a tick chart here. And the way it works, everybody knows Ninja Trader. You right click on the chart and you put the strategy on the chart. Of course, the strategy can be anything, but in our case, it's a strategy that actually makes sense to be uh, deployed on the market. And here it is, BT. Once I have clicked OK, this becomes gray, which means that once you put the strategy on the chart, you cannot change the settings on the fly. That's just how Ninja works. If you want to change the settings, then you have to disable the strategy, go back, change whatever you want, and then enable the strategy again. If I miss anything, then please remember that it's all on the website. All you have to do is just click on the links here, you can check out any of the settings in detail. Go back here to the settings. Very easy. Account, time frame, label, font size. This is the font size, just a visual thing. How, how big you want the letters to be on your chart. You might want to make it depending on the screen resolution or laptop, desktop. This is all customizable. What you want to see on the chart, text messages. Do you want to see the date and time? I just, uh, if you have seen my charts before, you see all these text, it's all customizable. Usually everything is customizable. Apart from the main methodology, which is trading the reemergence out of pullbacks, that's a given. That's what we do. But everything else is customizable. Some colors of the buttons, no problem there. You're getting down to a little bit to business here. So as you know, our algorithm is able to differentiate between the two types of signals. I'm almost definitely sure that nobody here is new to simple pullbacks and complex pullbacks. If you cannot recall it, just go to the website and look up the documentation. Let me just demonstrate quickly what we're talking about here. So this is a simple pullback. There's one zigzag. And sometimes this happens. And sometimes this might happen too. 
and even crazier stuff, right? And sometimes we just can't make sense of it all. But so these are, these two would be considered complex pullbacks. Anything that is more than one zigzag is considered complex. Some people just want to trade the complex pullbacks, and there's a reason to do that. Now, the, the downside is that you will miss all the simple ones, but it will save you a lot of headaches because, as we discussed in another uh, workshop, some simple pullbacks, you enter the trade and then it turns into a complex pullback and it might stop you out, which is uncomfortable. Auto switch off. We talked about this many times. Let's say you just want to do one trade and you don't want the system to take any more trades and you're, you're not going to be here to press the blue button. No problem. Here you can click this and then BT will ask you how many trades do you want to take. You see how smart this is? If this is not selected, then you don't see the underlying fields or settings so it's uh, the interface gets a little simpler. I'm going to switch this on, and there will be new fields here. So now I do want to use the auto switch off. So BT will ask me, well, how many trades do you want to take? One or five or 200? So we covered the auto switch off. Very good. Number of trades here, another important setting, market order, limit order, auto reverse. So if you get stopped out, do you want to go the other way right away? I don't really use this. Some people do. So let's just keep it simple, market order. And limit order is just fine. Just know that limit order, yeah, you might get a better feel sometimes, but there will be trades that you will not get filled on. Goes both ways. If it's a limit order, how many bars do you want to wait to get filled? After a certain number of bars, you, you will want to cancel your order because you don't want a limit order sitting there for two months. So after the default is after five bars, the order gets canceled if you don't get filled. Of course, if your market order, you see, then this setting is irrelevant because you will get filled. Okay. Now, ATR period, as you know, BT is self-adaptive and there are two foundational mathematical principles inside the code. One is standard deviation, the other one is ATRs. And uh, when it comes to ATRs, we need to define, well, how sensitive, how, how long you want the look back period to be. The default is 20 bars. If you want, that means that we'll calculate the ATR based on the last 20 bars. If you want to set this 12 or 10 or something, then that will be, then it will calculate the ATR based on the last 12 bars. You can test this out. You can even optimize it. I would just mention here quickly that on YouTube, we have now quite a few videos on how to optimize in NinjaTrader. So you can always optimize this. But in my test, 20 just seems to be working fine. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. But again, it is here. As you see, the settings are here for a reason. When you, the dashboard on a, in a car, it's there for a reason. Well, we buy the car, yes. But do I want to go left or right? There's a bend coming up. Do I want to be in second gear or third gear? Well, Porsche is not going to tell me which gear to be in. Of course, they made a car, but I have to decide. I have to make some decisions. And this is where skills do come in. Same, of course, with a pilot, needless to say. So same here. This is a software program. But if you're thinking of asking me what's the best setting, it's like asking me what's the best gear on a nice mountain road? Well, you're the one to know because you'll be looking out the window. So you have to do your own testing and you have to build up your own skills and trust the system and trust the setting that you choose. We as a software company, our job was to make it possible to change this and to customize this. It would make no sense to hard code it and not to allow the customer to change this. What if I say 17 is my favorite number and I hard code 17 in the code? That wouldn't make sense at all. Okay, so this is just part of the dashboard. Force exit, that's an interesting setting and the later development, a pretty new development and quite useful. No obligation to use it, of course, like with many other settings. 
But forced exit is for a situation, I think this I'm sure has been covered, but let me just run through this quickly here. So here's the thing, this is where we go along, right? And then we're in the trade and then the market does this. And then the question becomes, well, how long am I gonna stay here? My money is tied up. In the meantime, gold, silver, everything is going into the cloud. So I can't do the other trade because my money is here and this trade is doing nothing. So the question comes, well, how long, how patient shall I be? How long do I want to be in this trade? Is there a point where I just want to get out? 20 bucks up, 20 bucks down, I don't care, but this market is not going anywhere, or at least I don't want to wait any longer. I gave it the chance it deserved. So this is for, this um, force exit is for situations where you want to say that, well, if, in 10 bars or 20 bars, nothing happens. I want to take my money out of this trade and I'm going to deploy my money elsewhere. That's the forced exit. No obligation to use it. If, you, if you're not using this feature, then just switch it off. That's all. Okay, let me read the question here. So I stop for a second. Let's suppose, uh, let's just, I don't want to change this. I could change it to a 60 minute. Why not? Because at least I can show you that BT is lightning fast. Can you see this? The strategy was on the chart. I changed the time frame. How long did it take? 0 0.2 seconds. And this shows that Ninja Trader itself is fast because it didn't take any time to change the time frame. Okay, so here we are, 60 minute time frame. I'm trading. I have my trader's hat on. I'm sipping my coffee. I'm waiting for the opportunity, just like a cheetah sitting on the tree waiting for an opportunity. I'm in the ecosystem. I'm doing my job to survive. All right. The question is, how do I decide which opportunities to take advantage of? And that, I think that's what Tom's question uh, includes this aspect of it too, because let's suppose this is a four hour chart. Right now, it's not really a very good environment because this is, this is, not, this is nothing. This is not a situation we want to be in. We want to get involved with but let's suppose we're looking for something else let's suppose this area watch this a few days ago february 22 we broke out this is a four hour chart so i'm assuming that this particular trader you can translate and change the time frames accordingly to your needs keep about one to four one to five ratio otherwise it might work on anything as long as there's a crowd remember we need a crowd back to the issue this is four times bigger than this one. All right. And on the larger time frame, we made a pretty good move and we hit the Keltner. We violated the Keltner. And you see the candle becomes blue. So that's a wake up call for us. We can expect a consolidation area to be built. And I'm not making this up. We can see 1 million examples for this. This is how the crowd behaves. And then we can expect, this is by the way, a complex pullback. You see the first signal didn't go anywhere. The second signal was the winner. So this is just a complex pullback for seasoned Remek traders. There's nothing new here, it's not even a risk. It's normal action. But we're not trading the four hour time frame. Are my strategies on the one hour time frame? No problem. What I'm gonna do is that I'm in off mode and when it hits the Keltner and when this starts to build, two ways to do this. Usually the way I prefer to do it, I just wait for a signal on the four hour. And then let's have a look. So February 22, let's go back. Where was this beast? Here we go. February 22. So I just scroll over here. And here is the, here is the exact situation, you see? So let me just stop here. So here we are. This move is this move, right? And then the pullback on the four hour chart is this area. So actually it's like three days, you see, three days pullback, complex pullback. But eventually the thing starts to go. This is the breakout area here on the four hour chart. There are two pieces of wisdom here. First of all, if I'm in a bull flag on the higher time frame, I'm not going to go short. I will as a standard business practice, I'm going to ignore potential short signals here, not just potential short signals here, because the algorithm is doing its job and doing it well on the 60 minute time frame. But 
You see, I'm up against the wind. I don't want to go against the larger, higher time frame trend. When I start to get my first uh, long signal here, then let me just try to, in this area, can you see? Can you see the cursor? In this area, I'm getting the first long signal on the four hour chart. So the next pullback is not unreasonable to take the next pullback, which would be this. Now, I'm glad it's not a perfect chart because then it turns into a complex pullback and causes some a certain level of frustration, but it just demonstrates the other wisdom that we always use that or say is that use appropriate stops. Nobody ever became successful using tight stops. You can Google it for a week, you will not find anybody. Everybody realized that we need to keep a, keep a distance between us and the crocodiles. Remember, we are trying to drink from a pond. If you put your stop appropriately, 2.5 ATRs minimum from your entry, then even this, this crocodile action will not get you. You survive the attack on the stops and then you find yourself in the move, which is actually playing out on the larger time frame as well. And we didn't go too far, but I just want to note, we did hit the upper Keltner, and that's all we want. We just need to hit the upper Keltner. So the short answer is yes. I think it makes sense to put your trades in a higher time frame context in a discretionary way. Now, some people want to automate this, and I'm happy to say that the BT has an automatic higher time frame filter. So if you want to automate this, it has a very capable, let's go back into the settings, a very capable higher time frame filter if you want to switch it on. HTF parameters, I keep it off. Feel free to switch it on if you want and see what it gives you. Okay, going back to the next huge development area here is risk control. Now, this just seems like a very little button here, but don't be fooled. If you switch it on, a powerful a setting system opens this up, and there's serious mathematics behind this. This is also covered in other videos. You can, let's say you have a $100,000 account, and uh, you, you want to have a rule that at any one point in time, you can only risk 2% of your account size. So which means your risk can only be $2,000 at most, let's say, just to use round numbers. That's okay. You can do that in your head, of course, obviously, but you can leave, this, leave it to the software. If you switch it on, then the trade will be disallowed. In other words, skipped if it would otherwise violate your risk rules. And remember, we we are always counting in ATRs. So yes, we do say that maximum $2,000, max, maximum 2% 2 of your account. But otherwise, when we trade, we are not really counting in USD or money. We're counting in ATRs because that's like monkeys on a trampoline. What we want to really follow is how big they jump. How far do, we, do our stops have to be to be safe? So this is always translated from ATR into dollars in the background. And if your stop is, let's say, 2.3, 2.5, or even 3 ATRs, then the 3 ATRs will be translated into US dollars, and then the system will check if that US dollar amount is bigger than 2%. If yes, the trade will be disallowed. If it's below, then the trade will be taken. Now, this is for a situation where you want to enter the account size manually. Now, one drawback of this is that maybe nine o'clock your account is 100,000 and 10 o'clock your account is 105,000. Well, you have to stop the strategy and re enter the account manually. You, that's not very practical. So, why don't we automate this whole process and we tell BT to keep, a, keep an eye on the account size? It's as simple as that. You still have the rules, 2% maximum risk. But in this case, nine o'clock, the account was, let's say, 100,000. If at 10 o'clock it's 105, then the 2% of the 105 is different from the 2% of the 100, obviously. So 
BT will automatically always, before each trade, run back here, do the math in a millisecond, and make a decision if the trade should be allowed or disallowed. The same way, if your account decreases to 95,000 or 90,000 by 10 a.m., then of course your risk will be decreased as well. So this, this way, BT actually actively helps you not to blow your account because more and more and more of your trades will be disallowed. Otherwise, as we have probably, all of us have been through situations like that, that it's 3 p.m. and you're wondering, where is 40% of my account? How could I have been so stupid all day? With BT, that cannot happen because the trades will not be taken. Okay, so this is a huge, huge uh, development. Now, but that's not all yet. We have customers in Hong Kong. We have customers in the EU. Their account may be in Euro or some other currency, Australian dollar or something. So it doesn't have to be USD and account currency instrument currency, and there's a conversion rate, let's say 1.4. So yes, I do have to enter this manually at this point. We could easily automate this, but then we'd have to go to the Forex market and check the exchange rate before each trade. Now you can imagine that not every customer has the data feed and there could be data connection issues. And if, even if we go to the 6E futures contract, which would make sense, not everybody has 6E. And the exchange rate, if you're not in the US dollar area globally, then this is probably, you can set this once a day or once every couple of days. Usually it's says no big difference. If it's 1.4 or 1.5, no big deal. But certainly this is here available if you want to use it. But again, about 90% of our customers are on USD accounts. So for most of them, auto just works perfectly because that assumes that the account is in USD and then the market that we trade is in USD. So there's no conversion. Also, there's watermark features. So if you made, let's say 2% of your account in profit, you stop trading. 2% loss, this is of course customizable. You see, you can set it to anything you want then you stop trading. So that's another smart automation that you can do and so on and so on. Then we have another next area is, how, is what to trade, the quantity. There are two contracts, two order sets to use a technical word. And this covers any situation that you want. And there's another nice feature, a, not just a trailing stop, but there's such a thing that you can gradually tighten your trailing stop. This is what we call a parabolic trailing stop with a given percentage with each candle, the trailing stop will be tightened and eventually you'll, you will be stopped out from behind. Trading hours and then some characteristics of the input that goes into the mathematics. I'm not gonna, there's not too many left anyway and some of them are colors anyway, but I do want to mention the chop filter is a very serious ingredient in our methodology and in the way we trade, because as you know, the chop filter is, we, we love trending markets. That's where we want to be involved with, but sometimes markets do like this. Now this is on a smaller time frame. this could be a very strong trend. So don't get us wrong. If, you're in a, if you wanna hop down to a smaller time frame, then sideways markets offer very strong trends within the range but not everybody wants to do that so when the market becomes range bound for your taste then what you want is you can switch off the machine or the or the the blue button of course but even better you can tell the software to do this automatically and filter out trades that would otherwise get triggered in this area okay and then when will it end it will end when we finally break out and then we get the first pullback. And if you're on premium with me, this is, uh, this is something that we do every day. Wait for a breakout, first pullback after the breakout. So chop filter, important ingredient and does much of this automatically if you switch it on. Buffer zone is another one, unique, uniquely genius. 
I can't always remember where the original idea came from. But, uh, but nonetheless, today we have the buffer zone. And the buffer zone is a price action trigger which switches off the system or at least suppresses the triggers as soon as price action tells us that we shouldn't get involved. Let's suppose that we are trading as usual. And here is a Keltner channel. And then suddenly, and let's suppose we're long or we're thinking of going long. And then suddenly, price does this, penetrates the lower Keltner. That, and then yeah, it might come back or it might build a bear flag or something. But this is, a, this is an event that the buffer zone takes seriously. And the buffer zone will switch off the triggers and wait. That um, patience, that wisdom can save us a lot of money. It, there will be trades here with a high probability of not working because this event is a warning signal. Now this has been programmed into the algorithm, so you don't have to worry about it. If you switch it on, I suggest that you do, then we will have less headaches, less thinking, because we know that this is the way it's supposed to be and there's no, we're not tempted to fiddle or to enter trades with no reason. HDF parameters, we talked about this a few minutes ago. You, you are free to define a higher time frame. And look how flexible the system is. But just check this out. Let's suppose you're on a range bar. Let's suppose you're on a tick chart. The higher time frame could be a minute chart. I'm not suggesting you do that. I would keep it the same measurement unit just to be consistent. But again, as a software company, there was no reason for us to to limit the possibilities of a important functionality on the dashboard, okay? So here we go. You can set the higher time frame any way you want. And in that case, trades that would go against the higher time frame would be not allowed. Okay, I tend to, as I mentioned, I tend to do this with my own eyes these days, but the functionality is here if you are inclined to automate this process or this step. All right, and there's a lot of uh, color options, so feel free to play around with the colors. Trade alerts if you want to hear sound. You, know, you might be in the kitchen. By the way, this wave file can be anything. So you can even record your own voice and you say long setup or something. So or play tutti frutti or whatever you want. You can, this wave file, the Ninja Trade doesn't care what this is. You can choose a message, an audio message that you prefer for a given event on the market. And you can also send yourself emails. So you might be sitting at an airport or something or just not exactly at the machine. And there is a blog post, by the way, setting up email in Ninja Trader can be a little tricky. Please Google how to set up email, remec.ca. You'll find the blog post a few years ago. We posted on this step-by-step -step instructions how to set up email alerts in NinjaTrader. Pretty simple, but there's a little trick here and there. Okay, so that is possible as well. And that's about it, you see? That's about it. This, uh, this bottom part, this comes from NinjaTrader, actually. We can't even hide these sections because Ninja Trader forces us to display them. And that's for, for the better because that's the way it should be. These properties, these sections come from Ninja Trader 8 to make sure that the trader always knows the relevant settings are set in the way desired. Okay, so all that results in this not too complicated, pretty straightforward list of various settings and then once you're happy with them then you can save it you can even give it a different name if you want you can next time you can load the appropriate template you want and then you're ready to go remember the the savanna with the animals animals adapt we bt adapts to the changing environment automatically so one setting is mostly enough Okay, so I'll stop right here. That was basically a little summary of all the settings. And give me a second here. And then I want to go back to the original little slideshow. 
yes of course yes yes with pleasure let's do that so how to set up a stop and how to set the trigger levels in such a way that we can get break even pretty easily so yeah that's a useful one so let's do that okay here we go so bt i have to disable it just to change the settings so i'm just assuming we're taking all signals and we're taking market orders or placing market orders on the chart i'm just going to go to the order settings these two okay so here's what you do let's say we want to trade two contracts okay so i'm going to put two contracts on the market one in order set one and another one in order set two okay so order set one will have a profit target give me a sec so let's say this is an sma 20 and everybody knows this is the keltner channel all right 2.5 that's a default setting 2.5 and 2.5 so the keltner altogether is five atrs okay so far so good so let's suppose and we try to trade pullback so usually our entry is at or around the the midline not because remember not in the past 10 years did i mention or say once that a moving average is support resistance that's nonsense so i'm going to mention the moving average yes we do use it yes but not for support and resistance yes we're going to enter here somewhere in the middle if the sma 20 is right there or not right there it doesn't really matter to us because we trade we get interested when momentum reemerges, and we don't care what the sma does at that moment i enter the trade well this is probably 2.5 atrs something like this so we like to use that as a stop level if it comes back here that's usually not a trade i want to be long in any way right so why not just forget about it at the same time in this example to answer the question let's just use a very aggressive first profit target so if i enter the trade i'm going long if the first contract hits 1.5 atrs in profit which is well if this is 1.5 up to the keltner right then no this is 2.5 then 1.5 somebody something like this okay just an example all right a bit too aggressive for me but just an example so let's suppose price hits 1.5 i take off the first contract now the second contract and here is here is the main point when i hit 1.5 in profit this will be removed from the market i will be left with one remaining contract okay i made some money here i think it would make sense to start trailing at the moment or at the level where I take the first profit that's how I like it anyway so I start trailing when when I hit 1.5 in profits and then the next question is how far should my trading stop be at that moment now here is when it you can play around with the break even setting because if you set this at 1.5 then so you will be break even already so this will ensure that when the first contract is removed that's the point that's the point in time when the second contract gets trailed and then from that point on it's up to you how close do you want the trail to be the trailing stop to be if you put it close enough then you can put it at a level which would produce a situation where let's say you made a little money on this one and if it comes back and stops you out on the second contract then you break even right so that's how you can play around with the with the settings this is one page in the documentation and bt settings explained or settings reference just click on them and then you'll see a bigger version of it when it's warranted there is an explanation under the jpeg so strategy options of course is a more complicated area and very important area so there's a detailed description so please mark this page this is strategy settings explained chapter 13b in the documentation 
So we hope you like this little review about the capabilities and functionalities of ProSTRBT and feel free to browse our other videos about the same product and also visit our website for more information. Thank you very much and see you soon. Until then, mindful trading.